Okay, so now we're going to move on to some examples. So we'll move on to the guided notes here. Um, notes 4-1, examples of classifying triangles, angle measures in triangles. So we'll do a couple examples, and then we'll talk about a few more rules here. Um, example number one, classify triangle ABC by its sides if its perimeter is 20 centimeters. So the key word here is perimeter. So that's telling us what we need to do. Um, and also the word classify, that means to name. So we're going to give this thing a name. Now you might look at this and say that, okay, you know, that looks like it's scalene or it looks like it's isosceles. That doesn't mean that it is. You cannot go by the looks. You have to go by the math, basically. Uh, okay, so when you see this x plus 3, that is a side length. It is not an angle. If it was an angle, we would label it inside the triangle. So basically, this is a side, this is a side, this is a side. So we need to figure out, okay, what's the relationship of that? Well, if we add those, they don't tell us they're congruent, but if we add them, we get the perimeter, and they say the perimeter is 20. So we have an equation. We have x plus 3 plus 3x plus 2 plus 2x plus 3 equals 20. And now what we'll do here, let's combine like terms. So that's a 1x, a 3x, and a 2x. That's 6x. And then we have positive 3, positive 2, positive 3. So that's plus 8 equals 20. All right, now we're going to solve it. We'll go minus 8. Let's move the 8 by subtracting it. That gives us 6x equals 12. Divide by 6 on both sides. x is 2. Now that's the answer for x. That is not the answer to the question. They said classify triangle ABC. So what we need to do here is we're going to take the 2 and we're going to go back to the picture. And we're going to plug this in for every x that we have. Okay, so on the left side here, AC is 2 plus 3, and that's 5, so this is 5, and then this is 2 times 2 plus 3, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, and then on this side we have 3 times 2 plus 2, that's 6 plus 2, which is 8. So we've got 5 seven, eight. Those are all different. So if we're looking at our, our notes that we took on the front, let's see, we got equilateral, isosceles, scalene. All of our sides are different. Triangle with no congruent sides is what we call scalene. So our answer to this question, number one, we will say this is a scalene triangle. So that is scalene. Okay, let's look at number two. Triangle ABC is isosceles, that's the key word, with angle A, the vertex angle. Now, if angle A is the vertex, that's the vertex angle, then that means AC and AB are the legs. Those are the congruent sides, so I'm going to mark those, one mark and one mark. They're the same. The 3X is the base, that's different. Now we want to find the perimeter of the triangle. So this time we're looking for the perimeter. Well, we need an equation. When you set up an equation, you're thinking, I'm going to add stuff to equal something, or I'm going to say things are equal. These two legs are equal, these two segments, these sides. So that means 10x minus 3 equals 7x plus 6. Now to solve it, I want to move this 7x. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. So that gives us 3x minus 3 equals 6. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So 3x equals 9. And then divide by 3. x equals 3. Now that's not the answer. They say find the perimeter. Perimeter is where you add up all three sides. Let's go back to the picture. We'll do 
uh, put a 3 in for x, so this is 3 times 3, which is 9. 7 times 3, I'll write it up here, plus 6. That's 21 plus 6. That's 27. And then this is 10 times 3, which is 30 minus 3 is 27. Now that makes sense because they should be equal. So this tells me I'm doing this right. The perimeter is we add up all three sides. So perimeter is 27 plus 27 plus 9. And what that gives us is 63. So P equals 63, and that is our solution right there. Okay, now, that was one of the main ideas, talking about classifying triangles, giving, giving it names, talking about the vocabulary. The second thing here is called the angle sum theorem. Let's talk about angle measures. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is always, always 180 degrees. Now on the side here, well, or below, let's go ahead and draw a triangle. And we'll represent this with a picture. We'll call this angle one, angle two, angle three. What this theorem says, and a theorem is a rule. We can prove this, and actually I'll show you the proof in a second. We know that angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. This is always true for any triangle. Acute, obtuse, right, equilateral, scalene, it doesn't matter. All three interior angles have to add up to 180. Now the reason why this works, a backwards Z, a backwards Z right here, these two angles will be congruent. So this is angle three at the bottom, this has to be angle three at the top. Now look at what we have here. If I take angle one, angle two, and angle three, and I put them together, I've got a straight line. They all meet at the same vertex, and the way that the other rays of the angles go off, it creates a straight line here, which is 180. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is always 180 degrees. Okay, so this is why this works. It's not because the teacher says magic, and therefore that's what it is. We can actually prove it. All right, so let's look at some examples here. In example number three, find x. All right, x is an angle. You know that because it's inside the triangle. It has this degree symbol. Now we know the other two are 52 and 47. So let's take this. We'll take all three. x plus 52 plus 47 equals 180. We can add up the 52 and 47. They're on the same side. So we get x plus, that's 99, equals 180. We'll subtract 99 from both sides. And what that gives us, x equals 81 degrees. That's it. Now what you can do, you can check this. Okay, we'll take a calculator. All right, if I take a calculator, well, let me plug it back in. Let me do 81 plus 47 plus 52. Does that equal 180? Yes, it does. Okay, so this means that my answer is good. X equals 81. All right, number four, find X. Same kind of problem. All right, the only difference now is that we're looking at angle measure, or we're looking at variables. Um, now, this arrow is for 4X minus 2. It was just too small for me to put it into the picture. Well, we know that all three of these add up to 180. So let's add them up. X plus 2x minus 3 plus 4x minus 2. Those are the three angles. They have to add up to 180. So they equal 180. Let's add them up. Like terms, 1x plus 2x plus 4x. 7x 
and we have minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 equals 180. We'll go plus 5, so 7x equals 185. The last step is divide by 7. Now in this case, it's not going to work out perfectly. We get x equals... 185 divided by 7, 26.4 degrees. Okay, so most of the time we don't want to round it. In this case, you know, we can say 26.4 or we'll go math. Number one is fraction, enter, and it's 185 divided by 7. So it's actually, it's the same thing. So we'll write the answer as x equals uh, 185 divided by 7, and that's it. If you said 26.4, that would be close. The one thing about that is if you check it, if I check with 26.4, so the, uh, the top angle, there's my 26.4, and then 2x minus 3 is 2 times 26.4 minus 3. Whoops. 2 times 26.4 minus 3, 49.8. And then 4 times x minus 2 is 103.6. If I add all those up, if I do 103.6 plus 49.8 plus 26.4, why is it doing that? 103.6 plus 49.8 plus 26.4. Does it give me 180? It's real close. It's 179.8. The reason it's not 180 is because um, I've rounded it. Okay, so this answer is close, but 185 over 7 is better. All right, we'll do one more here, and we'll take a pause. So number five, let's find x. In this picture, you've actually got three triangles. You've got the one on the left. You've got the one on the right. Okay, these two big ones. And then you also have the third triangle in the middle. And what we're looking for is the x here. So, how do we get it? Well, you can look at this. It's kind of like a puzzle. Let's fill in the pieces that we know. If I look at the blue triangle on the left, the third angle is this one right here. So what I can do is I can find that. I'll add up what I've got, 58 plus 65, which is 123. Now whatever's left over has to make this equal to 180. So if I take 180 minus 123, what that gives me is 57 degrees. So this is 57. That's the missing angle. How about the red triangle? Well, we've got 80 and 72. Let's add that up. And what that gives us is 152. Now, you know the total has to be 180. Here's your third angle in the red triangle. So subtract 180 minus 152, you get 28. So this would be 28 degrees. Now, what that does is that takes us into the bottom triangle. And um, let's see, we got two angles. Let's find this third angle. Well, 28 plus 57 is 85. Now you have to subtract that from 180 because all three of them have to add up to 180. That gives us 95 degrees. So here's 95. Now we're looking for x. x is actually outside the picture, but... These two angles, the way they cross, these are vertical angles. They have to be the same. So if this is 95, then x is equal to 95. All right, so what you do here is you just you have to go piece by piece. Each piece is pretty simple. Overall, it's kind of confusing. But if you take it step by step, the problem will work itself out. All right, so that's the end of part two. We'll go ahead and flip this over and we'll do part three.